morning, good morning. Clap your hands, all ye people, for today is the day that the Lord has made, and we're called to rejoice and be glad in it. I was excited when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So if you are excited about all the great things, the marvelous things, the miraculous things that our God has done on this day, throughout all last week, throughout all of your life, the way he has brought you out, the way he's healed your body, the way he's turned your life around, the way he's restored relationships, I dare you to give the Lord our God the fruit of your lips. Bless his name. The Bible reminds us that everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord and do so in spirit and in truth. So we worship the Lord God on this day. We invite you, all of you, both virtually and in person, to worship our God, no matter how it looks, no matter what you have going on, but to worship our God because we serve Him, an audience of one. And before we go any further, we want to go ahead and worship the Lord in a spirit of prayer and adoration. Oh God, how we love you, we thank you, we adore you. Father, we thank you that you have given us another opportunity, a fresh a breath of air, oh God, to wake up this morning and experience your brand new mercies. Oh God, you are good. Father, for that we say thank you. Father, won't you inhabit the praises of your people? Father, we yield everything at your feet, all of our concerns, all of our frustrations, all of our desires. We yield them to your attention even now, oh God. And we cast them, we fling them at your feet because we know that you care for us. Now, God, I pray that as we sing unto you, as we worship you, as we talk to you, as we are submitted to your authority on this day, Father, that you will be pleased by our worships, Father. We ask that you will be with those in person and virtually, oh God, and that ultimately that you will get the glory. Throw your weight around, Holy Spirit. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all, and we thank you, amen, and amen. Again, we welcome you to the Encouragement. Temple's worship experience. Won't you join in with us as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth? We're going to be that in music. Our music ministry team under the leadership of Minister Shante North.
worthy. He woke you up this morning. He's worthy of our praise. He started you on your way. He is worthy of our praise. You're clothed and in your right mind. He's worthy of our praise. Heaven and earth, we adore your name. But if there's no other name in heaven and on earth that can save, there's no other name that has the ability to change lives and heal this world. There's no other name. Hallelujah. The Bible says that everything that has praise. He the Lord. The devil is trying to come in here, but God is still good. We're going to give him a praise this morning. We're going to lift him up. We're going to give him glory. Hallelujah. So God, we give you the highest praise right now. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. You're worthy, God. Hey, God, you're worthy of a perfect praise. He's worthy of it all. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's good. He's good. Hey, God, thank you. Glory to the Lamb of God. Lord, we bless your name. Because you are worthy, God, of our praise. He's worthy. It's a personal thing. He's worthy of my praise. Because the writer said, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we wouldn't be where we are this morning. And so, God, we bless you all this morning. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the song of his heart. Praise him with the tremble in the dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding symbols. This is a part where we all play. Praise him in everything that has breath. It doesn't matter if you're too much old or you're 100 years old. If you're breathing, the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise you, Lord. So everybody that's online in the building ought to clap those hands. Everybody clap your hands. If you're breathing, clap your hands this morning. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, we all that have the Lord. Amen. I've read to you Hallelujah. Psalm 150. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, and the doers of his word.
Father, we thank you that your hands are mighty and they're not, that they're not too short to reach us up out of the mess that sometimes we place ourselves in. Father, we thank you that even the devil in hell can't pluck us out of your hands. Father, we thank you that you keep a closed hand, oh God, when it comes to gripping us and making sure that we don't fall away. Father, we say thank you that even on last night, Father, you kept us, you placed your shield of protection around your children, oh God, that you allowed for us to lay down, oh God, in the very image of death. But then we woke up according to your will, oh God, and we were able to open up our eyes and see your brand new mercies. Father, we say thank you. While there's so much bereavement and so much death around us, Father, we say thank you that you've given us another chance. Father, it was not because we look so beautiful. It wasn't because we have all the right worldly connections. It was not because we have the right degrees or because we're the right skin complexion, because we have the right amount of commas in our bank account. It was not, Father, because we have beautiful curly hair or straight blonde hair or thick curly hair, Father, but it was because of the Lord's mercies that we were not consumed. Great is your faithfulness. And we thank you that your faithfulness is not predicated on our faithfulness. That your credibility stays and that your character remains the same. Even when we are fickle and finite and when we straddle the fence from time to time, Father, we thank you that you remain the same. Your word says that you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Father, thank you that we can trust you with our friends are fickle and finite. In a world of fake friends and real enemies, Father, we say thank you that we can trust your word. When people hug us every day all the while having a knife in our back, Father, we say thank you that we can trust you. Thank you, Father, for your healing virtue. Father, right now, we thank you that you're watching over everyone. That you're an omniscient God, all-knowing. That you're omnipotent, Father, all-powerful. Yes, we thank you that you're an omnipresent God. So right now, we thank you that you are already at every hospital bed. Yes, we thank you that you're in the hospice care facilities. We thank you that you're in every emergency room. We thank you that you're at every surgical table right now, Father. We thank you that you're at every nursing home, Father. We thank you that you're at every daycare, you're at every daycare facility, Father. We thank you that you're at every open place of employment, that you're at every political office right now, Father. We thank you that you're even at our homes, Father. We thank you that even right now that you're already in the not yet future, Father. You're already working things out for our good and for your glory. Father, we thank you that we don't have to send you anywhere. Oh, God, we thank you. Because you are already there. Even when we can't see or feel that you're working. Father, we thank you that you never stop working. That we can always trust you. Father, even in the midnight hours when sometimes depression wreaks its ugly head even on the believer. Even within the church, among your pastors and your preachers and your deacons, oh God. Father, we thank you that we can lift up our heads and be encouraged because we can lift up our eyes onto the hills. Knowing that all of our help comes from you. You are the creator and the sustainer of all life. Father, so we say thank you for encouraging the bow down head. The one who has been in a state of lowness. For some time, Father, we thank you for freeing them from the anguish and disappointment that comes with just experiencing loss on a day-to-day -day basis, loss of loved ones, loss of jobs, loss of simply just feeling validated. Father, we say thank you that you wipe all the tears from our eyes. We thank you that you don't Turn your head away when you see your children in anguish. We thank you that you rock us in your arms. We thank you, Father, that even though some of us have to take prescription medicines, we thank you that you are the answer. 
Father, we thank you that you are more potent, oh God, than any type of ambient sleep medicine, oh God, any type of Xanax relaxation medicine. Father, we thank you that you're able to heal and remove any and all pain better than any hydrocodone, better than any Tylenol 3, better than any morphine can do. Father, we say thank you. That you are the balm in Gilead. And so great is your power. Oh God, that you healed even the sensing soul. You can hear our, heal our mind, body, and our soul. You can give us that right mind that is in perfect peace. Even as we keep our mind stayed on you. You're able to heal us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Even everything in between. High blood pressure, the common cold, COVID. Oh God, thank you that you're able to heal diabetes. You're able to heal Alzheimer's, that you're able to heal schizophrenia, oh God, and bipolar, oh God. We thank you that you're able to heal everything. There is none like you. While physicians are still simply practicing medicine, you are the medicine. Father, we say thank you that you heal our very essence, our soul. Even to the extent that you gave your only son to heal us from the cancer of sin. Thank you, God, that you thought we were worth dying for. That you didn't say, I'll simply stay on my throne. But you decided to come down to travel through thousands of generations. To walk with us and show us the way. Thank you, God, that you didn't leave us to our own devices. That you didn't leave us. Oh God, to suffer, oh God, the way that the enemy wants us to suffer because we know that you came to give us life and have it more abundantly. That the enemy comes to do none other than to steal, kill, and destroy the sheep of your pasture. My God. Father, we thank you that we can trust you. Father, now we pray, oh God, over the homeless today. Yeah. Father, in a climate and temperature where the summer seasons get so hot. Father, we pray for a refreshing, not just in their soul, encouraging their spirit. Oh God, but that some place will be open for them to be able to experience the cool breeze of an air conditioner, God. The things that we take for granted. Father, I pray that you will raise up people in your vineyard that are willing to not simply just pray for people, but be the answer. Father, your word declares that the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are so few, Father. But we are to pray to you, the God of the harvest. Father, raise us up and allow us, creating us a spirit that desires to be workers. To be your hands, your feet, your eyes, and your ears. To be that blessing to someone else. That it would not just be about my four and no more. Yeah. But that we'll be free and liberated to give, even as we've been blessed, oh God. Father, we pray for everyone that is seeking employment right now. Father, the reality is that even now, sometimes a bachelor's degree is not sufficient for to fit the criteria of what employers are wanting. But Father, I thank you. That you are able to qualify those that don't even feel like they meet the criteria. I thank you for favor in the name of Jesus. That just because we're connected to you, that doors will be opened. Even when we don't necessarily apply. That somebody will find us on LinkedIn. That somebody will find your children on Facebook. That somebody will find them by way of another person, oh God. And that favor will be bestowed so that they will have gainful employment. Father, we bless your name and we pray over the political season that we have in, 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 engaged in right now, Father. Father, we pray that whoever you desire to be in the presidential office, that you would let that be so that there will be no trickery, no deceit, but it will be only what's your will and what's best for your children, Father, I pray. Father, that you allow people to be in position that care about your people. That it would not be about the color of their skin, oh God. It would not be about their educational status. It would not be about their social economic status, about how much money they have, oh God. But it will be all about what you need to fulfill the needs of your people. Because you said 
that you will supply all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So, Father, we need you to throw your weight around. We need you to show up mighty and strong. Father, we pray that you will be with every church that is open and assembled in your name, oh God, that they will preach what thus says the Lord. It will not be an isogenic text that's simply based off of their opinion and what will flatter the minds and palates of your people, but it will be what you said to correct, to reestablish, and to restore your people. Father, give us a boldness to speak and to share Jesus without fear. In the workplace, in the barbershops, in the salons, oh God, when we're getting our nails done, when we're in the mall, it doesn't matter how old we are, whether we are five years old or 50 years old, Father, give your people a boldness. That we will stop being closet Christians. And that we will be more disciplined disciples that are excited about you. You're good. So we thank you right now. Father, forgive us for our sins today because they are many. Creating us a clean heart, Father, and renew the right spirit, a right spirit, your spirit in us. That we will be convicted when we are misrepresenting you. In the name of Jesus. Now I pray that you will be with the preacher of the hour. That you will speak in and through her, oh God. That you would give her a word from on high. Father, give a clarity of thought and mind and allow the viewers both in person and virtually. That they would not be seeking a particular preacher or pastor. But they would be intentive because the goal is to hear from you. Yes. And we thank you for the word on today. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen.
is the real question. Do you really trust him? Thank you, Jesus. God, I trust you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a song that says, um, and I had planned to have the help with this song. It says, uh, show me your way. Of um, Psalms 86, and we can 
turn there. We probably you don't you don't have to stand right now. Um, as I was um, trying to dissect and understand what the psalm psalmist was saying, I ran across something that I was reading. And I'm going to, I want to read that to you. It's a little portion, might be a little altered because I always put whatever I want to put in there. And you know, when you read something, you, something else comes. Yeah. That's just the way it is. But this is what it said. It's, it started off saying this, we are made to know God. We're made to know him and to know about him and to know him Personally, as father, as friend, as our creator, as sustainer. And when we don't know God, we don't really know anything. Mm -hmm. And then he went on to say, our lives are as incomplete without him as the sky is without the sun. And then he said, our souls find rest in him alone. And we know that the Bible says that we can, he said, come to me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. My yoke is not easy. If you just take up on me, if you learn of me, my yoke is not easy. My burden is not light. He said, the most important thing or it says our souls find the rest in him alone. The most important thing in this life is not what we do mm -hmm. or where we go or who we're with or how high we rise, how long we live or how influential we are, we, we become. But the most important thing in life is him. It's God. It's Christ. He's the most important thing or being or person or however you want to put it mm -hmm. in this world. Amen. The question is, do we really believe that? All right. He is the most important. And nothing compares to getting to know the God who knows us. Nothing compares to getting to know the God who knows us. He seeks to be known. He uh -huh. seeks to be known for he has revealed himself in nature and in scripture. Through though our finite minds, these little minds of ours, can never comprehend all there is of God. And we yes. can. Yeah. That's why we always dig in all the time. Though we can never comprehend all there is of him, our souls find rest in him. And when everything around us fails, and there will be some failed moments, if you haven't failed yet, there will be some challenging moments in our lives. He will never falter. Right. Right, 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 right. He will never lose strength. He is always constant. He will never lose momentum. Right. He will never speak in a hesitant or unsteady voice. He will never move unsteadily. Right. Or in a way that shows lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. He will Good. never hesitate or waver in action, purpose, intent, he will never give way. All right. God will never, never, never give way because he's constant. Yes. He's constant and he never, ever changes. Mm -hmm. He doesn't change. And when the foundation Tremble and they will tremble. You will have some turbulence. Uh -huh. You're going to have 
some turbulence sometimes. That's right. And it'll shake you up when you have it. Mm -hmm. I am reminded riding on the plane years ago, and I don't think I've ever had an experience like it before, and don't want to ever have an experience when it felt like the plane was just going to drop. You will have some turbulence in your life. And when he, but he is a change. He's changed. He is unmovable. Uh -huh. He's eternal in the heavens. And when our hearts are overwhelmed, they're broken, they're torn, they're battered, they're scorned, he is the rock. All right? He is our sustainer. He is our keeper. He is the one that will take us through. Amen. Amen. He is the one that will bring us. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he is. He is. He is. And when we look at the book, Psalm 86, I am not going to read it all, but there are a few things that stand out to me. David, the Bible says, a man after God's own heart. He is a man when we look at the prayer that displays what I say confidence in God's ability to deliver him. Right. He's confident in him. Yeah. Just read it and you see that he, he's already uh, looked ahead and knew that God was going to deliver him. And he talked to God like he knew he was going. It's just like talking to your daddy. You know, when I call my daddy to come and uh, fix my tire, years ago. <laughs> I knew that when I called him, he was going to show up. All right. If I needed something in my pocketbook, whatever I needed, I knew that he was going to show up. All right. I knew that my mom would show up. Sometimes she wouldn't tell my dad, but I knew they would show up. And even today, if need be, I know they'd show up. And so we know he knew that God would deliver him. And he tells us in Psalms that there were arrogant men. There were men that had risen up against him. Mm -hmm. It says there. And that they had sought his life and none of them had their eyes on God. Mm -hmm. None had set their eyes on God. And he began to cry out to the living God in a state of Humility and in confidence. Uh -huh. He was humble and he had confidence. And therefore he cried out to God. The Bible tells us that we can come before him. And we can believe that he will answer us when he calls. And David did just that. He began to petition the Lord. Come on. And if you look, and you can walk through it with me because it's right there. I'm coming straight up out of there. Mm -hmm. And he began to petition. And he first said, first he said, hear me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And listen to me. Yeah. And you got to have confidence when you're telling somebody to listen. Hear me. Some people tell me that sometimes Shante didn't listen. Because I know my mind is everywhere. Uh -huh. But he said, hear me and listen to me. And then he says, preserve my soul. That means to guard me, to watch over uh -huh. me. Then he says, save me. I, I, I am your servant. Help me. Rescue me. And then he goes on and says, be gracious to me. Have mercy. Have mercy. Pity uh -huh. and make my soul glad. In other words, bring some joy back into my soul. Yeah. I don't know if you ever need a, a little joy back in your soul. And he yeah. began to proceed and then he began to talk about the character of God mm -hmm. in verse 5 and verse 10 and verse 15. He said that you are good. Yes. And you're always ready to forgive. That's good. That's good. You're good. 
And you're always ready to forgive. Mm. All right. That's good. The Bible tells us as believers that if we confess our sin, he's faithful yeah. and he's just to forgive us. Thank right. You. No matter what it is. That's good. Yeah. He's always ready to forgive. Thank you. Yeah. He's abundant in love and kindness. And he's plenteous in mercy. His love is everlasting. It's uh -huh. unfailing. It's unwavering. Yes. It's always there. Yes. He loves us, the Bible says, with an everlasting yes. love. Yes. Every time you move, you're moving in the midst of love. That's good. Uh huh. When you wake up and you're in the midst of love. Yes. Thank you. You know what it's like when you know somebody loves you. Yeah. You know somebody cares for you. Yeah. It's a difference. And then he says you're great and you do wondrous deeds. And then he goes on to say that you are God alone. alone. One God. Uh-huh. Not a, one God. One, one God. Faith, one baptism, it says. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one of you. Yeah. Only one. And only then it says one. that you are full of compassion. Yeah. You have a compassionate Heart. Sometimes God is moved by what his compassion for us. Yeah. Yeah. He's moved by his word. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. He's long sore suffering and he's plenteous in mercy and in truth. Truth. Mm -hmm. Hold on to that word. Truth. And then he says this, and I, I thought this was really cool too. He said, among all gods, you know, we all, you know, some people think we all gods. Uh -huh. Among all gods, that's Baal and Dagon and Muhammad and uh -huh. Buddha. Yeah. Among all gods, all, whatever gods you can name, yeah. among all, there's none like you. Come on now. He said, there's none like you. None. I got that. I got to thinking about that. There's, there's nobody. Nah. Nobody like you. And I love it when it says, it, and neither is there anyone that can do it yeah. like mm. you can do it. Yeah. Nobody can bring me out like you can bring me out. Nah. Yeah. You know, my dad is good. My mama's good, but there are just some things that they can't do. Yeah. Come on, dad. And yeah. only God can bring me out. Yeah. Only God can soothe my weary soul. Yeah. Only God. Only God. Oh, baby boy back there, as wonderful as he is, my God, he can work my nerves. Come so on. That's a God. Talk about it. Oh, my God. That's a God. And then I love it when he says, and no one can work it. Yeah. No one. No one can work it. Yeah. Like you can work it. I love the way the Bible says, God. Did it again. He does it over and over yes. and over yes. and over again. If we think about it, he does it. Yeah. Yeah. It may not feel like when we're in the moment, but God can do it. Do it. Yes. Ah. Oh my God. And as I was reading this psalm, and there were a few things that struck with me, and I'm not going to, I'm going to pass and do a series on this book here, but. There were a few things that stuck out to me. Number one, he said, he said, hear me, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Answer me. Mm -hmm. And this is why. Because I'm poor and needy. And I'm needy. Mm -hmm. I'm poor and I'm needy. And then we, when he went to verse 11, he said, teach me. Teach me. Your ways. And I've been praying this one. Teach me, God, your way. Yes. And then he made a commitment, and I will walk in your truth. truth. Mm. And then he says, give me an undivided heart. Mm. An undivided heart that I oh, may fear on. your name. Yeah. The Ooh. name above all names. Mm -hmm. In other words, help me stay on yeah, the yeah, straight yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Help me yeah. to stay there. Yeah. Absolutely. Help me. There's a lot out there. Yes. Help me. Help me, God. There's a lot of influence uh -huh. in the world. A lot 
of influence. Oh, yeah. Help me, God, because yeah. I can't do it by myself. I need right. to help me. Yeah. Mm. Stay on the straight and narrow. Yes. Oh, God, and I'm going to praise you. He said, I'm going to praise you with all of my heart, and I'm going to give you glory mm. all the days of my all life. The days of my life. Now, we don't often see how bad, that's the way I, look, that's the way I say it, how bad we really need God. Mm -hmm. We don't often, we don't all the time see that. We don't realize how much sin lurks within us in so much that we become divided within, within. I don't know about you, but I know myself really well. Yeah. I know when I'm off. Yeah. Yeah. I know when I'm on. Right. I know when I'm slipping and dip that whatever I know. Uh -huh. Myself, okay? Uh -huh. All right, all right. We don't realize how much sin lurks within us so much that we become divided within. We don't always realize how much we don't know in our human state. Absolutely. We think we know everything. Right. I don't know if you run into some of those kind of folks that just know it all. Yeah. And know nothing, you know, when you're your twins or, you know, yeah. I came from back then. And all it took was to look at I did, even though I might have thought I knew it. When you sat in front of those people, you know you didn't know. We don't always realize how much we don't know within our human state. We don't recognize our selfishness. When we fall into the same trap over and over. and over and over again, do we ever stop and say, Lord, help me. Help me, mm. help me Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. The psalmist said this. He said, I'm poor and needy. And I'm needy. Mm -hmm. I think it's all right for us to be needy. All right. Now, we don't like people to be needy, but I believe in relation to God. That's good. Right, dependency, yes, yes, yes. It's all right for us to be needy and helpless. Yeah. I'm hopeless. I'm unclear. I'm empty. I'm confused. Yeah. I need you because left to my own devices, I just give up. Yeah. Uh -huh. I walk away. I, I say the wrong thing. I make wrong decisions if I'm left just to myself. Come on. I need you, Lord. Yeah. The son that's had a heart of humility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. And he said that I'm poor and I need it. I'm, I'm poor. If you labor before God and think about it, you will find yourself having a broken heart because you will, because you will begin to see exactly where you really are. Right, right. He understands that apart from God, he is empty and he is hopeless. Jesus said this, blessed are what the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, when we come to God, we must realize that our own sin and spiritual emptiness and poverty, we've got to realize that's that's where we really are. You understand? That's where we are. We must not be self-satisfied or proud in our hearts thinking we don't really need God. If we are, God cannot bless us. The Bible says that he opposes what? The proud. Yes. And he gives grace to who? The humble. Mm -hmm. Create in me a pure heart and yes. And clean my heart, oh God, and renew the right spirit, spirit in me. within me. That clean refers to something that is free from what dirt? Yeah. Stain. Uh -huh. uh, unwanted clean substance. That's, that's clean. But yeah. take it on over to pure. Yes, it refers to something that's unmixed. Yes. Uh huh. It's not tainted. Tainted. Not unadulterated. Right. Yeah. It's pure. Mm. So we need to be asking God for some. To purify us. Yeah, that's good. You know, because when we clean, when we get clean, we can get dirty. That's that's good. Yep. 
Yep. So we want to be purified. And we have to know that with God, we can do nothing. That's what the song writer said. With God, I can do nothing. With, without him, I would simply just fail. Uh -huh. Without him, I would be like a ship <laughs> without a sail. I'll be tossed. Uh -huh. and I'll be tripped. Uh -huh. yeah. With every man and every doctor. And then he says this. Lord... Teach me. Hmm. Show me. Mm -hmm. Point it out to me. Uh -huh. Open my eyes so that I can see clearly, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Humility is the starting point for teachability. Right. It's right. the starting point for teachability because right. Right. teachable souls know their need for learning. Yes. You know you need to learn. You know you don't know it. You know you don't have it like you think you got it. Come on, Come on now. That's good. Being teachable means being open to learning and growth. And I think that's why they're always trying to get us on YouTube or Facebook, whatever it is, or in the house here. You know. And then not only that, that's why God is always saying, study. 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 Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Being teachable means that we're open to learning and growth, and it means acknowledging that you don't know everything and that there is always something new to learn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But every time we look at something, it seems like there's something different. There's something that stands out before us. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure, you're right. Being teachable requires humility, a willingness to admit that you have flaws uh -huh. and that you have weakness, that yes. I have weakness. Yes. Uh, it means having a desire to improve. Yes, the word of God puts it like this. He said he leads the humble. Mm -hmm. Is that what he said? He leads the humble into what? What is right. And he teaches the humble um, what? His way. Not your way, but his way, right? You see, Jesus was the teacher. Yeah. And I like this. I think we need to camp right there in the Gospels. Ah. Yes, sir. He proclaimed that he instructed the multitudes, the disciples, who often addressed him as teacher. He taught about the kingdom of God. The law, the prophets, the ethics of love. He used parables, questions. He used miracles. He illustrated in his teaching. Uh -huh. Jesus, talking about Jesus. He talked publicly to the crowds and privately to his groups, uh -huh. to his disciples. Jesus upheld, but he reinterpreted the Old Testament law. When we think about Matthew and the Beatitudes is what we call it, we see in chapter 5 and 7, we see where Jesus taught. He taught about murder. He taught about anger. He taught about temptation, uh -huh. divorce, loving our enemies, oh, giving, prayer, fasting, treasures in heaven, war, worry, asking and receiving the straight and the wide, the uh -huh. false prophets, the rock. Ten foundation. Jesus was and he still is the master teacher. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that he went about doing what first? Teaching. Preaching. Uh-huh. Healing. Yeah. Ah, yeah, he went about doing good. But he went about teaching. Teaching. Mm -hmm. Teaching. Jesus said to the disciples. I will not leave you comfortless. Yes, That's right. And that's what he said. Wow. And when I think about that, when I see all that I see, the Bible says that he told the disciples, I will not leave you comfortless. In other words, I'm not going to leave you stranded. Yeah. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. That's it. Right there. I'm going to send you a comfort. Mm -hmm. And what is he going to do? He's going to teach you what? All, all things. things. All Oh. And then John, first John tells us that the anointing mm. from the Holy One, talking 
many of you believers, the anointing yeah. from the Holy One is inside of us and he teaches us. Uh -huh. He teaches us. That's why when we read the word that there's something that's enlightened. Yes. Right? Because there's something on the inside. There's come the on, spirit of God on, that's on. on the inside that's of us. Good. That begins to open up our eyes yes. to the truth and the revelations yeah. of God's word. Yes. That's what that is. It's the anointing on the inside. That's why when you decide to go left, there's somebody that yes. taps you on your shoulder. Yes. Come on. Hold up. you in your heart and say, oh, yeah. back up, Shante. Back up, girl. Yeah. Back up. You need to go this way. My God, that's why when you think you want to go in the room by yourself with somebody, come on, there's something that's talking to you. Let it something go. that's talking to you. Yeah, the anointing of God, the Spirit of God, is on the inside. That's right. That's good. That's good. We have been sealed with the Spirit. Of God. That's good. Ah, the anointing, the anointing, Lord, teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me your ways. Yes. Not my ways, your ways, God. My, my, way. my ways are not all that great. Well, yeah. Sometimes my, my thoughts are not, not even that great sometimes. Mm. So I really need somebody to teach me. Yeah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. How many of us are sitting at the feet of Jesus? That's a question. How many of us are sitting at the feet of the... And I know we all, all of us are just religious folks. But how many of us are really sitting at the feet of Jesus? How many of us? Oh. And how often? That's yes. what, <laughs> how often is that's it good. just when we get in trouble? Yeah. That's good. Just when we just don't feel good? Yeah. How many of us are really sitting at the feet of Jesus? I'm reminded of Mary and Martha. Yeah. <laughs> I know we're busy. I know we're busy. I'm busy. There's always, I tell people, always, there's always something I've got to do. There's always something going on. Mm -hmm. In my mind, in my house, there's something that's always going on. But was it Mary that was sitting at the feet of Jesus? Even though she had much that she could be doing at the time, she sat at the feet of of Jesus. And I believe she was sitting there because she knew that as I would sit there that I'm going to get ahead because I'm yeah. sitting in front of the teacher. All right. And I believe she was sitting at his feet because she believed that he would give her clear instructions. Yeah. Clear. And sometimes you need to have the cobwebs out mm -hmm. and you need to get something clear in your mind. That's good. That's good. Right. Clear instructions on how to navigate this life. Navigate through this life. Yes. Sitting there at the feet of Jesus because she felt like it would help her make the right decisions if she just sat there a little while. Yeah. It would help her to speak the right words. My God. Uh, all these slip-ups here and slip-ups there, but we just need to sit <laughs> at the feet of Jesus because the more we sit at have you ever noticed, think in your mind, that when you up to something, that if somebody comes there, that whatever you up to is no longer, you're no longer up to it anymore. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. Yes. The closer you get to him, the more he can talk to you, the more he can lead you, the more he can guide you, the yeah. more he can instruct you. I remember my son told me many years ago, not many He's not really that old, so a few years back when he was in high school, actually when he was in high school, he says to me, Mom, I, did, I haven't done da 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 because I just keep, I just keep hearing you. Mm -hmm. I just keep hearing you. Yeah. And, and that's the way it is for God when we sit at the feet of Jesus and we, we, we bask and we begin to partake of his word. We can hear. You can hear. We can hear him a little better. Now the question is, are we going to do what he's telling. Right. What he's That's good. That's good. Hmm. I believe she was sitting at the feet of Jesus because she believed that he would teach her how to live this life. Mm -hmm. How to live. And she would make his way. She would he would teach him 
her his way and not her way. So she was saying to him, teach me your way. And I'm reminded of the woman that was called an adultery. I'm reminded of her. And when I think of the Pharisees that, that brought her to Jesus, remember that woman to Jesus had all kinds of stuff to say about it. And what, did she, what did the teacher say? He who was out sin, let him first cast the mm -hmm. stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he and when he when he finally looked up, he, he said, Woman, well, where are your accusers? Yeah. Where are your accusers? Right, where are you at now? Now you go. Hmm. And you said, No more. Peter wrote to the people of faith. I'm going to remind you because it will help you to grow. That's why, right, you know, you hear things old. The more you hear things, it helps you to become better. It helps you to remember. That's why you, you know, when you're learning math, you do the same thing over and over and over again yeah. until you just get it. I always would tell them, I love math, so I would tell people, that, that wasn't gr that great. I'm saying you got to do step one, step two, step three, step four, and you've got to do it like that over and over again until, until you, if you know it like the back of your hand. Yeah. So he says that I'm going to tell you, even though you know these things, uh -huh. some kids, you know some things, and we know you know some things, and, and you're pretty firm on some things, but he said, I'm going to keep telling you this. I'm going to keep reminding you about the knowledge of our Lord Jesus mm. until I die because I want you to always remember. Mm. I want you to always remember. Teach me yeah. your way. His way. Mm. Your way yeah. so that I can stand firm in your way. Number three, he says this, I will walk in your truth. Now, now he's making a commitment. You're going to teach me. And you know the Bible says we can't just be doers and hearers of the word. We can't just be hearers of the word, but we have to be a doer of the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. And so he says, now, I'm going to do the, Lord, teach me your ways. But it's not enough just for us to be taught. We've got to do, we got to make some adjustments in our lives. Mm -hmm. He says, I will walk in your truth. In other words, I'm going to live each day walking in the way. Yeah. The truth that you have taught me. Right. That mm -hmm. you're teaching me. Yes. You will be my guide. You will be the one that will lead me in the path of righteousness. Uh -huh. The Bible says in Matthew 13, the kingdom of heaven it's like a merchant man. Uh -huh. Think about it, a merchant man. You know, he said, I'm seeking goodly pearls. Mm -hmm. And when he has found it, he sells everything that he has to buy it. That means I'm going to give up anything, uh -huh. anything for truth. Right. I'm going to give anything up for truth. I'm going to let go of this and I'm going to let go of that. I'm going to put this in order. Yes. For truth. Yes. yes. That's what he said. I want, because truth is what is valuable. Yeah. Truth. Therefore, I will walk in truth. I will live in truth. I will hold on to truth. truth. Thy word is what? Truth. truth. The word is a light unto my pathway. Uh -huh. The interest of thy word does what? Gives light. And it gives understanding to the simple. Mm. Understand that. This means that we put truth first. We always, we should always be putting truth first. Mm. And we should show it by the way we live. Mm. My God. The way you live determines what truth <laughs> you're mm. holding on to. Are you holding on to the truth or some kind of truth? That's good. Or B, you know, the capital T, capital T truth. All right? Mm. Understand we must obey, whether it's from scripture or from the unction of the spirit, as 
Jesus' mother says, what did she say? Whatever, Whatever he, he says, say, do it. Do it. Huh. Okay? Don't let time cause you to drift yeah. away from truth. And it will if you don't watch it. You got to yeah. you got to be alert yeah. at all times. Yeah. You got to be conscious at all times. Because time will cause you to drift away from truth. Don't let material things become more important than God. Yeah. And don't let relationships with others influence you to walk away from that which That's is good. contrary to God's word. All right. Our thoughts and our actions must be clean and pure. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. Number four, unite my heart. So that I may fear mm. you. And I need my heart so I can fear you. Engage and knit my whole heart to thyself and service. And deliver me from incompetency and wavering. That I may not at any time or at the least degree be withdrawn from thee either by corrupt worship or to the love or the pursuant of lust and vanities of the present world. In other words, help me to stand firm on truth. Mm -hmm. Not to be double-minded, uh -huh. tossed by every wind and every doctrine, you know, the Bible tells us that a double-minded man is what? Unstable. Unstable in oh. all his way. Now, if you don't know nothing, I always say that a person does all kind of craziness. Uh-huh. Sometimes when you just don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. And the only way that we can know something is that we've got to take time to get to know God. Right. We've got to we got to position ourselves just like Mary did before the feet of Jesus and learn more about him. Because uh -huh. there's, there's just too much out there. There's too much uh, people doctrine. Yeah. There's too much people doctrine. That's what I would call it today. There's too much, and when you don't know nothing, yeah. you fall to anything. That's right. The Bible says this to us. And I'm going to leave you with this. He says this. That we ought to be, we ought to be trying the spirit. Lord, testing the spirit. Lord, is it God? To see whether it's of God. That's right. Because there are many what? Is that in the world? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things out there. That's right. Sure. And so we have to come to a point that we are, that we become lovers of God. Yeah. And I see people that, 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 that it seems like they love men. Rather than loving God. Yeah. Or, or they trust men. Anything that's being thrown out there. We must begin to sit at the feet of Jesus. Uh, we must. Shantae, you must consciously, on purpose, sit at the feet of yeah, yes, Jesus. Yes, I like it on purpose. So that I can be clear in my thoughts. Yeah. We've got to get there. Absolutely. <laughs> for our own self's sake, for the sake of our kids, for the sake of our grandkids, whatever. Yeah. Because there's too much out there where you can slip over. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Slip into. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And then so he says. I'm poor, I'm needy, mm. I need you, God. Need I'm you empty, need. I'm hopeless without you. Yes. I need you. I need you I to need teach you. me. Mm. Teach me your ways because your ways are higher than my ways and your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Yes. And Lord God, I will walk. I will commit to walk in your truth. Amen. Your word is true. Yes. Thy word is true. It's a lamp. It will guide me. It will lead me. It will instruct me in the way in which I should go. Uh huh. Your word will teach me that. 
I don't even have to go outside for that. I, you know, because you're only in church so long. Right. And you're only in Bible study so long. So we have got to allow God's word. Right. We have to sit before. We have to learn with it yes. so that he can guide us, so that he can tap us on our shoulders when we're not doing right. Yes. You know, tap us before we open our mouth. Tap us before we open our mouth. My, my. So we can make decisions yeah. before we do this and we, before we do that. You know? Mm. So you can miss that 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 wreck or, or yeah. miss this situation. Uh, or you can know that this 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 guy and this gal, that ain't the way to go. Because God's tapping you on your shoulders all the time. Yeah. Mm. And we're uh, all we can say, yes, sir. My, my. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, you know, that, when I was coming there, that, that's what we say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. And I, as old as I am, and I don't consider myself old, as Pastor would probably say. You know, I mean, what you call my mama? <laughs> you know, who's who? Almost 90. My God. But. You want to be conscious mm -hmm. of sitting at the feet of Jesus. Amen. You really do. Yeah. Because we are in a world. And I don't know if it's social media that's bringing it all out. Mm -hmm. But everything's there. Everybody's been uh, critiqued. Yeah. And dissected. Got these over here that think they, they got it all under control. They got it all together. Mm -hmm. And then maybe if you dig and dig on, on this side, you'll find that they 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 really don't. Mm. You just don't know it. Right. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, God. So that I can walk in your ways and in your truth, Lord, and I'm going to worship you with all of my heart. All of my soul, mm. all of my mind, all of my strength, and I'm going to give you glory. Give you glory. Yes. Show me your ways that I may walk with you. The cry of my heart is to love you more. You see, when you love more, yeah. you do differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to disappoint the person that you love. Mm -mm. That's true. Because if you do, you're just going to feel bad about it. Uh -huh. If you have a conscience. <laughs> if you really love it. So, that, so, so the, my, my, my encouragement today is that we allow God to teach us. And that we will walk in his ways, walk in his truth. Allow him to direct us. I had the opportunity um, I met, met a young man this week. Before the week was, I was like, God, you know, I want to bless somebody. I, you know, you know, I want to, you know, I don't have a million dollars. But, you know, and people are begging all the time. All the time. And sometimes I'm like, what up? Yeah. I think Mickey D's is tired over there. Right. <laughs> but I don't know. I guess I guess the God, you know, when I ask when God when you ask God something, you just you just be on alert. Yeah. When well, you yeah. just be yeah. on alert. So yeah. I went to Walmart yesterday and this this uh, young man says, uh, he's asking for some money as I walked out. And I'm thinking, okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'm not sure if I have a had any money because I typically don't carry cash, so I started going through and trying to see if I had some change. And he mentioned something about food. I said, "Well, I can buy you some food." Right. <laughs> and then, because uh, that's all he, he wanted, some. That's what he said. He, I don't know how true it was, but that's what he said to me. I said, "Well, I can buy you some food." And he said something else to me, and I said, "I can buy you some food." And I said, just wait just one moment. He said, oh, oh really? <laughs> and so I said to him, I said, well, you just stand right there, and I'll be right back because I need to put my groceries away. And, and uh, I left, and I came back, like I said. And I, I said, there's a subway right up in there. 
Let's go. Whatever you want, just order it. Whatever it was. I can't even remember the man's name now. But I did give him a card for the church. <laughs> <laughs> I did give him. Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 Come on. Y'all get a woman of God out here. Thank you, Lord. And teach us. That should be every last one of our testimonies. Amen. For the Lord to continue to teach us his, his will and his way. Amen. No matter how long you've lived this thing, you don't know everything. No, and they used to tell us when I was in school, the moment you stop learning, you begin to start dying. And so, God, every day I want to learn more of you because there's so much in that word. That you will never learn. You'll never know everything. Amen. This is the moment we want to offer Christ to someone who may be viewing us online or here. You've heard the woman of God said to renew the right spirit that's clean our heart and make us pure. Maybe you've been trying to do it your own way, clean your own self up, only to find that what you using to clean yourself has always kept you stained. But I want to encourage or invite you to clean yourself with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus can make you white as snow. Forgive you for all your sins and wrongdoings. Amen. You're saying, I know the Lord and the forgiveness of my sin. I have a relationship with him. But I'm not connected with a body of believers that want to see me grow. If that's you, encouragement temple, we're here for you. But if you're looking for the perfect leaders, this is not the place for you. That we're not perfect. But we serve a God who's constantly perfecting us on a daily basis. We can learn and grow together. So if that's you viewing us online, we encourage you to connect with us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. We will respond to the message. Amen. We thank God for the woman of God, Minister Shante Lord, on this Sunday. Our announcements are as follows. We have Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. virtually. And so we ask you all to connect with us virtually. Don't do not, not this Wednesday. This Wednesday we will, we will, we will, we will not have Bible study. We're in observance of the 4th of July, which is, uh, we're not going to fight with the 4th of July. So this Wednesday, uh, we will not have Bible study. Bible study will resume the Lord's will next week on July the 10th. Right. Uh, on the second Sunday of July, we will be having a baptism. And so those of you who desire to be a candidate of baptism, please let myself know or Pastor Chris or leave us a message. Uh, we ask y'all, you have to know Jesus Christ in the forgiveness of your sin. And so if you have not confessed that he's your Lord and Savior, then you're not ready for baptism. Now, I will say this, because some people say I was baptized as a kid, and you, you do never get wet. Because you don't have chance, you just got wet, or whoever in the denomination of your mind will see some sprinkles, sprinkles. Not knowing who he is, but since then you've gained a relationship with the Lord, I encourage you to let us know. I want y'all to follow us on our social media platforms. We're on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. If you're on Facebook, we ask y'all to like our page. If you have YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube page. Amen. I believe those are all our announcements. Um, we're at the point of our time now that everybody can play a part of giving uh, the service that is given. Ethan, give me my, my, my envelope, please. No, that's mine. That's mine. That's mine. Amen. Those of you online that desire to give to Encouragement Temple, we do have electronic givings that's connected to the broadcast. We do have PayPal available. Uh, we do also have Zelle. And so we ask y'all those who are giving, if you're like me, you'd like to give old school, I do have, we do have envelopes. If you desire not to use envelope, that's all fine. There's no, the envelope doesn't matter, but that the heart and the purity of your giving matters. And so we go ask God, we're going to pray over the offerings. And the uh, deacon Reed will come around and receive the offering. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the offering, God. We thank you for those who are giving, God. We thank you for those who are not.
not give it, but have the desire to give. Father, as a prayer was prayed, Father, we ask you, God, for those who have the desire, not the means, that you bless them with gain for the poor, that they may give unto the kingdom of heaven. And Father, we ask you, God, that those who are giving, Father, that you bless them. God, you bless some 30, bless some 60, bless some 140. And Father, we ask you, God, let open up a window, God, that they may receive blessings upon blessings that they don't have room to receive. And Father, we ask you, God, let the gifts that's being received be used for the edifying and building up of your kingdom. And Father, we bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we say amen. amen. And praise God. Amen. And Ethan will come around and receive those gifts. You know, the next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month as we partake in the memorial service, as we observe what the Lord has done for us. And so we ask you all to prepare your hearts. For by the word of God, we thank God for you all. I believe those are all of our announcements. Amen. Pastor Chris is going to come up and receive our motto. Y'all receive our motto. Our motto. Encouragement Temple is a place where Christ is edified through our worship and our witness. Where the believers are empowered in the preached gospel and discipleship in the communities and life and God's saving grace to all. Amen. Those are our motto now. Since they're trying to put me on front street. I believe those are all our announcements. Amen. Amen. We ask everybody to stand as we dismiss. Amen. Lord our God, we come. We thank you, God. We thank you for the message. And we thank you for the messenger, God. Reminding us, God, that we need you to teach us your word every day that God every day we need you to clean our hearts God that we want our hearts to be centered on you and Father we ask you in the name of Jesus that you strengthen her up God that you encourage her heart and her soul God that you expand her territory Father and Father we thank you for those who are here and those who are viewing us online Father we ask you God that you rain down the little special blessing today God Father, whatever that they were praying for, according to your will, that you answer. And Father, we ask you, Father, as we leave this place, God, that you guide and you protect us, you keep us safe from accidents, and allow us to get to our various homes and destinations safe, God. And Father, we ask you to bring us back to the house of God on next Sunday, as we worship and honor you, God. And to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to the only wise God, be glory under dominion and power. To then we'll see you all next Sunday, Lord's will. For praise and worship as we, under the Lord Jesus Christ, be encouraged.